Tell us what you thought of that. We talked earlier this week. You were impressed with that quarterback. What? Oh, he's unbelievable. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's a fun guy to watch, man. He's uh, electric um, in everything he does. And he's just relentless. And he's a great player. Can you walk us through the, the last? Sorry, Joe. No. Um, your, your thoughts on the game in general, and what did yeah. you tell you guys? Yeah, I, did, I told him uh, how proud I am of him. I'm just. Uh, I appreciate everything they've done, and they, I mean, that, that's a team that uh, took a heck of a game to beat them, you know, they hadn't lost, we hadn't lost all year, and we almost found a way to, to win it there, that kind of against the odds, uh, I was just proud, just how proud of, I am of our guys, and since, uh, since I've been here, and how much they've given to us, and uh, just, uh, I'm just, you know, mindful of, just how much I appreciate him. Have you have you, can you walk us through, through the final drive there? Was that did you guys sequence it to go tempo and have two timeouts on the far side of the Yeah, field? well we got the um, when we got the pretty big completion, I was hoping to um, not let them reorganize and try and try and get up and uh, and get the ball thrown. It didn't work. Uh, we, um, we didn't complete it and turned out to not, not work out, but uh, that was the that was the plan. I mean, that's what we did all game. Was go tempo. We had them on their heels. And, and, uh, yeah, it came close. But I would have loved to see Kyle attempt that field goal. Yeah. Was was Jake's was Jake's first read there because because he he threw the, the the ball away when he scrambled out. What was his first read there? Was Who, like his progression? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, there's a couple of things. It's it, it's based on. Um, I can get up on the chalkboard. I'll stick around for that. Actually, there's a there's a couple things. It's rotation and who's one on one, and and then it's, he works. Uh, Scott, were you on the field? Yeah. Yeah. Last play. He's one. Uh, he's Scott's one on the progression, and he's got works it inside out. Yeah, it's it was hard for me to see what that was ground level, so I didn't didn't really see. Him. I don't know where placing a uh, Sac State history, but have you ever been in a high scoring affair like this one tonight? Been in a lot of high-scoring games, Joe knows. Um, uh, that was that was pretty wild. That was, a, that was as wild a game as I've ever been a part of. I thought it had a chance to be like that. I did, um, and so it was one of those games that I just knew we were going to have to keep scoring. You know, it's just the way it works sometimes. I, you know, I wish we would have. We, we had a couple of time, couple of blown opportunities on offense. Um, I have a couple of calls that I wish I had back. Um, so, yeah. Scott tonight, just doing it all out there. It's one of my favorite moments is him throwing the touchdown pass and then turning and staring at me, staring down at me. Like, did you see that? Because he hasn't really thrown that that well in practice, and he's practiced it probably 12 times. Um, that was his best throw by far. And that's just, that's who he is. The guy's got competitive greatness. He he brings his best when his best is needed. I mean, he just does. He's, so I'm not surprised he made the throw, but I've never seen that throw in practice. Uh, <laughs> He's a gamer. What was the nature of uh, of Jake's injury in the game, and what can you say about the fact that I mean, he had a limp pretty heavily through that whole yeah, second I mean, half. Both, he kept coming out. Yeah, no, both those guys are, are warriors. Our whole team's warriors. They just keep being relentless. And uh, yeah, Jake, uh, he just kept coming back, and it was a lower lower extremity injury, and uh, yeah, he kept, he came in and made some big plays. What are your emotions right now, given everything you've accomplished at this point? Um, yeah, that's a good question. It's kind of exhausting, you know. I mean, you're in it for so long. Um, but just, uh, I guess, we're really just grateful, you know, that uh, I've had this experience with uh, the senior class. These guys are really, it's a really amazing senior class, what they've done. Three big skies, one one loss, and the big sky, undefeated FCS on the road. Um, it's just a, it's an incredible class and uh, just I just love the guys so much I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss them. with everything going on right now what's your next course of action just as far as how you evaluate everything that is happening outside of the field the next 24 36 hours yeah I mean uh, tonight I'm just gonna go home and go to sleep <laughs> um, I don't really have a better answer than that um, I'm just tired emotionally and physically but uh, grateful for um, so I'll just, you know, uh, kind of take it a take it a day at a time right now. I'm just really focused on uh, taking this all in and all the relationships, and then uh, deal with that tomorrow.
Is there, there a lot to think about? No Cameron Scadaboo and then Chad Stanley defensive tackles also. Is, is there still a lot to think about on your end? Um, you know, I'm just going to keep all my comments on this team and this evening. That's going to focus on these guys. Cameron, what, what, uh, how would you size up the season? And, and can you look ahead to what you guys have coming back next year? Yeah, I mean, this guy's given me a great opportunity. I mean, probably, I mean, you could say my junior year is my best year, but I would say this is one of my best football years I've ever had. Put me in great places. Um, our team has done a great job putting me in a successful spot. So, um, I mean, I'm excited for everything to come. Um, I'm not too worried about much. I'm just taking it day by day, just like everyone else. Um, but, you know, I'm here to play football and I'll always wear Sac State football on my chest proudly. Earlier in the season, you talked about how much fun you were having playing for this team. Um, how now that you're kind of on the, on the other side of the season here, is it is this the most fun you've ever had playing football? Hundred um, percent. I don't think I dislike one of those guys in the locker room. Um, I grew up with a couple guys, not you know everyone disliking each other, but this this football team loves each other. Everybody. I couldn't tell you one guy that doesn't like another guy. Um, so I mean, we had great memories in the locker room. They'll continue and whatever locker room or whoever comes in or whoever leaves is going to continue. Um, I mean, football is a magical sport. Um, bonds are created through any player that comes to the locker room, love or hate, but we're on a love side. So that, this was definitely my funnest and most joyful year of football. Scott, uh, what's your role, overall assessment of this team? Could they really have some good things to say about you? I agree. Um, yeah, I think they could. Um, I mean, I love, I love all my guys, and then, I mean, I don't have much else to say. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, okay. I was talking about the uh, incarnate word. Okay. They had some good things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were all super respectful after the game. I mean, you know, football trash talking happens during the game, but as soon as it's over, no matter what, it's we we have personal lives, and everyone's cool. Um, I mean, all those coaches are great coaches. They're prepared, prepared well, and I got props from every single one of them. So. I do appreciate them. When you talk about how strong this culture is among the players and, and how much love and joy there is among the players, do you think that's something that's going to be able to persist, you know, for a, a long time, and that this foundation that you guys built is, is steady regardless of, of whoever is here, player or coach? I mean, like I said, we all love each other, and whoever comes in, whoever leaves, it's going to be the same culture throughout everything. I mean, we all have. The guys that are in there that are staying, there it's it'll be preached no matter what. I mean, we all know that that atmosphere, so we want to keep that atmosphere. I don't think anybody's going to want to go a different route on how we act towards each other. What will you remember most about just this season overall for you? I mean, twelve and one. That's awesome. I couldn't ask for any better with twelve and zero through twelve games. I mean. Fell short tonight, but I mean it's it's not easy uh, losing a football game with 66 points on the board, you know. So I mean I take it all in every day, and it's just everything was great. It's growing up here in Sacramento, and then being able to come and be a part of the success and just the turnaround of Sac State. I mean I think now Sacramento is learning how to be a football town, right? Like it really wasn't much of a college football town before that. Um, how good does that feel? That feels great. When I, I mean, when it's fourth down with the other team going for it, I mean, I turn around and I put, raise one arm in the air. I got everyone in the crowd standing up. So, I mean, it's great to see everybody come together as one. Uh, Sacramento's awesome. They always had my back no matter what. Um, there's been haters out there, but they switched up. They, they're, on, they're on my side now, and they're on the Sacramento State side. So. I mean, it's, it's hard to live here and not like us now. So, I mean, I appreciate Sacramento for everything they've done for us. People even went and got uh, jerseys made with your name on the back. Because, you know, y'all don't sell them. Joe Davidson knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love this toy. So it's my best friend and his, his, his 
long time girlfriend. But I was best friend. <laughs> and she, and, and she kept saying, "Hey, I want to get a Cameron Scandal jersey." I said, "Well, that's sell them on campus. Yeah. Maybe his mom has some in the garage. I don't know." So she ordered one and put his name on the back, spelled it right, and um, she goes, "I'll give it to him for Christmas." I said, "It's too late." You'll get it to them for the Causeway, so they work for the Causeway and their season ticket over. So they're so that's their great. fans. So, Troy, what can you talk about your two quarterbacks and what kind of players and leaders and yeah. how selfless they were? And they gave you every ounce uh, again. Yeah, I mean, these guys have been. Um, I mean, they've been unbelievable since you know Jake's been here a little longer, and then Ash's been here the last two years, and I just love both those guys and. I really appreciate and trust that they came here and, and, and trust in our staff. And um, geez, we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we're at with either of those guys. I mean, they're really special. Um, and I love them. They're unbelievable people. Um, great leaders and just fierce competitors. So those guys will be missed. Jeff, what offensively? <laughs> What, what did you see out there that they threw at you guys um, that, that presented such a challenge? I mean, honestly, nothing we haven't seen before. Just a lot of four D linemen covering six gaps, and their quarterback's fast. He was able to find that hole. But, I mean, never, nevertheless, we should have been able to stop him. And that was the big takeaway, was keeping him in the pocket. How, how tough is that when, when you've got a guy who's so dynamic that he can, he can throw over the top end of coverage, but also has the shiftiness that you kind of, you're chasing him even if you're getting home, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, push 60 on you, that's how tough it is, honestly. You just gotta learn from him and come back. What's this year meant to you? Sorry, one more time. What's this year meant to you? It's meant everything. This has been by far my most fun, best year of football I've ever had. And it's just like you said, it's like you go in the locker room and when I first got here, like, you couldn't really talk to everybody, like the other cliques, whatever, and and then it's just the culture's just changed. We talk to everybody. When the defense takes the field, we always get a break. We always talk to each other, like high five, whatever. It's just different. It just feels like a real family. Why was that so natural for, for this group of guys that you have, this coaching staff that you have? Because changing cultures like that is not an easy thing program to program. Why was it so easy for you guys to do it like this? Honestly, I wouldn't really say it was easy. I think it took a little bit of time. And you know, when, when new coaches come in, we have to get used to their style. We had to get used to afternoon practices, set a morning and everything changed. And But I think it was for the better and it took a little bit of time, but we all realized that. And I think that we all came together through the hardness of fall camp and, and we just came together to overcome just a similar obstacle. Sure, I know these guys have talked about, you know, the culture is a little bit. What was your staff meant to you and just building oh. that culture? Can you guys pass the mic? Thanks. My staff, I, I, my staff's incredible. Just, they're great people, they're really sharp, they're hard workers, they care about the athletes. We're all about love, and I think all the position players know that their coaches love them and care about them. So this is a special group, you know, staff, and not just the coaching staff, but the support staff, um, strength and conditioning, training staff, academics, equipment. I mean, they're all. It's a it's a pretty phenomenal team. Troy Cameron talked about Sacramento a little bit, but it's one thing for a team to believe you go down double digits twice in the fourth quarter that they can come back and win, but the crowd seemed to believe it as well and seemed bought in the entire time. Can you speak a little bit on just the atmosphere for this game and all the games sitting in the rain last week and just you've experienced? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think uh, I think our guys just, have, and I've said it a lot, they just always think we're going to find a way. And so that's how we play. Um, we, you know, just, just kept competing and we really thought, even till, down to the end, I thought we were going to However, the next 48 hours go, you know, this is your home. You know, you, you've taken programs and reestablished them here. You've stocked out a roster with kids from up and down this region. What does Sacramento as, as a community mean to you? And how have the last three years impacted you personally? Yeah, Sacramento is uh, it's my home. It's I always come back here. 
you know, I'll go away and then I'll come back, you know, and uh, so it'll always be home for me, uh, no matter what the future holds. Uh, I love this place, I love the people, um, and uh, hopefully they'll continue to move on, you know, to our Hornets and our team and, and our school. I think, uh, I think we have established something really special here. So, um, uh, Jed, I want to ask you a little bit, kind of in the same vein, um, from got it pulled up right here. It says you're from Brentwood. What does Sacramento mean to you? You've been here. Uh, yeah. it says you're a junior, been here a while. What does it mean to you to kind of be sh uh, shaped and molded by the city? I mean, it was a big transition. Brentwood's not nowhere near as big as Sacramento, you know. And it honestly just seeing the transition from when I first got here, looking up in the stands and seeing a lot of stainless steel and not people in it, and. Just and then you look today, and there's just so many people, and it's just it's honestly just a great feeling, just to see how many people come to support us, and it's just been really fun. All right, any questions? I I do have one, uh, Coach Taylor. What what is it? What has it been like working with? Uh, and I'm not trying to put any emphasis on this, but I just want to get a clear, de a definitive uh, 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 explanation. What has it been like working with a uh, Athletic director uh, Mark Ork oh, pretty much Mark. gave you car blanche on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mark is the best. I mean, he's one. He's an unbelievable person. Uh, and he's a great AD. He doesn't overreact to things. He's very supportive. Um, I don't think guys ever turn the program down for anything. I really don't. You know, I mean, the things I'm asking for is for our, our student athletes, and he's all about them. So, um, President, both he and President Nelson. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those two guys to begin with. Um, and they've, uh, they've really established a commitment to, to, to giving a good experience, one, for our players, our student athletes, and then uh, giving us the opportunity to build a program and win. Troy, are you able to share just a little bit of what maybe the message you gave your guys afterwards, obviously? <coughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, just how much I love them, basically, and how proud I was of them. You know, that was really it. You know, it hurts when you, you know, we, we don't win the last game. It just, it does. Um, but uh, that doesn't change how I feel about these guys. I, I'm really proud of them. And, uh, how could I not be? You know, if you guys watched it, I mean, it's an unbelievable effort. You know, so I'm uh, just really proud of them. All right. Thank you. So Thank much you. fun, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Yeah,